What is up, everybody, and welcome to a little special episode we're doing here. Uh, this this show is going to be called Nintendo Chat. No, it's not. Fuck you. Let me start over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is up, everybody, and welcome to an all-new show, a new episode, Nintendo Chat. Myself, I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, joined, it's been a while since I've done this, my best friend in all the land, Mr. Tobe Thornton. What is it feels it, Tobe? right, Bobby. It does it feel right. right. It feels, oh, man, half a husky in the house. We're, we're good. So things are good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Toby, how you been, man? I've been okay. Yeah? yeah. People miss you, man. People, people. Oh, tell me about it. Like, people reach out to me a lot. I've had a lot of tweets, uh, people saying that they miss hearing my voice and mm-hmm. they just miss listening to our slight banter back and forth. And they're going to get it today. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to get so. it today. I, I, you know, so Toby reached out to me earlier this week and was like, "Hey, man, I just want to talk about a game." Um, and I was like, "What game?" So I gave Toby a list of things like we could talk about these things, and he was like, he picked one of them, and that's what we're going to talk about. And maybe that's what we'll do. We like. We'll just take some topical things. I'll throw it at Toby. Toby can pick one whenever he has time. So this is going to be like a steady weekly thing. This is whenever Toby has time. So this is a, so if you want more of this, tweet at Toby's underscore take and tell him <laughs> to get off his keister and let's go. My no good keister. Yes, your no good keister. <laughs> um, what game do you want to talk about, Toby? Where, where, where are we at here? So I've been playing... Well, actually, I've been playing a few games. Okay. Uh, but today we're going to primarily talk about super, new super lucky's town yes on switch yes um this game originally launched on the xbox i thought it was gonna be xbox exclusive and that's yeah. where it was gonna go and it'd be locked away and that's all it would ever be uh what was it e3 2019 right mm. um they come out and they announce it's coming to the switch yeah. To a lot of people got excited. I personally got really excited because I wanted to try this game. I wanted to play it. I wanted to check it out. We're now getting that opportunity. Um, did you buy it when it launched? No, I actually bought it recently. Okay. It kind of flew under my radar for a while. Yeah, me too. Um, and then I was just browsing the eShop and I, I saw it had a demo. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let's check the demo out, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So I downloaded it. It's a very short demo. It's like one level, yeah, one of the first levels, and I just fell in love with it straight away. Yeah, I um, I too, it kind of flew under the radar a little bit, and I was just like, okay, what's going on here? Like, what is this all about? And then all of a sudden, I was just like, hmm, I think, uh, I think I want to try to check this out deeper and play it. But the funny thing was, was I played it first, and I, I got it when it la- like right after it launched. And I was mm. just like, eh, I'm not feeling it. I put it away, and I was like, let me go play something else for a while. And then one night, I was just like, man, I want to play. Actually, you know what it was? You told me you were playing it. Yeah. And I thought, let me give it another shot. Let me just give it one more chance. Dude, I I love this game. This game is pretty pretty awesome. So let's let's start with this. What were your expectations going into this game? Um. So, I've played a few uh, independent 3D platformers before, uh, as, uh, and, yeah. and they're a bit hit and miss. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's been a few different Kickstarter games that are just, they're trying to capture that Super Mario 64 f- vibe, mm-hmm. and, you know, you've got the floating, moving platforms, and the, the sort of semi, semi-open world environments, and, you know, I've played I've played the odd one here and there, and... They never quite have that magic that I'm looking for. You know, they're kind of like average platforming. The characters aren't that interesting. You know, it's passable, but it's nothing special. Yeah. And then I played New Super Lucky Tale demo, and straight away I could tell that this was sort of a cut above the rest. Oh, yeah. You know, it was more highly polished. The character design was really unique and, and fun. Um 
the music's great, the level design's great, but most of all, the first thing I noticed was it was just fun to move around the world. Mm -hmm. And I think as soon as you have that, um, you know, everything else starts to fall in place. Like the the number one most important thing for a 3D platformer is, is it fun to control the character? Yeah. And this game certainly has that. So for me, my expectations, again, were very low. I thought to myself, well, the game didn't sell well on Xbox. So of course they're going to try something different. When they first announced it, I thought straight away, like, why is this not on a Nintendo console? Like, this mm. game seems like it would be a Nintendo game. So my immediate reaction was, well, maybe it's not that good. Nintendo's taking everything right now. Why would it not? Why would they not take it to Nintendo? So my first reaction was, it's, it's probably not that good. Um, but then when I did see it come to Nintendo, I thought, okay, maybe there's something here. Maybe they're going to give it a go. Um, and the thing of it is, is like after Odyssey, I don't feel like there was many good 3D platformers that came out. You know what I mean? So I was kind of had that itch to, to jump into a 3D platformer. And mm. I think it's just hitting me at the right time is what it, what it boils down to. But I, I too, my expectations were very low, but it immediately, it just rose as I started to play. Now, again, my first playthrough, I was streaming. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't understand the controls. So I kind of wasn't a fan of it, you know. But then when I sat alone, and after you, like I said, I spoke to you. You said you were playing it. I said, you know what? Toby is a big fan of platformers. If he's suggesting this and saying he enjoys it, Maybe I should give it another go. So when I sat down that playthrough and I really took my time and learned the moves and learned everything that I needed to do, I really fell in love with it. And I thought this this is something special. This is like you said, it's a cut above mm. most of the other platformers. Like especially on the Wii U, we got a couple of indie Wii, third party 3D platformers. They were trash. They were really bad. Um, this one just immediately took it up a notch. Um, yeah, so I, I wanna... totally agree. Because I, the last 3D platformer that I played, not made by Nintendo, was Ukulele, mm-hmm. and I, yeah. that really disappointed. That kind of put a downer on 3D platformers for me. Yeah, me too. And yeah. I just that was the one I just I couldn't get into, mm-hmm. and it you know it wasn't that great to control there was no direction to the levels mm-hmm. um it was kind of just sparse and poorly designed yeah. in my opinion yeah um but yeah like i totally felt the opposite when i played the demo for the lucky Star. how how does the controls compare to a mario game for you i feel you, I, before, yeah. before you jump in there let's let's just let's just put this out i believe you and i are on the same agreement that it is mario and mm. everybody else like yeah. Mario and Nintendo do something extremely special with the controls of Mario. And if you don't have if you're not that level, don't even bring the game. That's my opinion. So yeah. that being said, what what's your what's your feeling? So I feel like the controls are really tight. Um you, the character's got a, a slight momentum to him. It's not like you know, there's a long build up of speed or anything, but He's got enough, just enough weight to him, like Mario has. You know, when you're when you're turning around, he has a slight lean to the left or to the right, depending mm-hmm. on which way you're turning. Um, there's a really unique mechanic that this game has, where you sort of burrow under the ground. I love that, and that is just something that's very cool for a 3D platformer to do. I've never seen a, a game do that before, mm-hmm. and it just feels so satisfying because it's that move is tied to the right trigger. So you just feel like you're, you're sort of clamping down and just going zoom, under the ground. And then you you can move around and collect coins that are buried in the ground and other things. But you can also do really cool things where you go like underneath things that you can't when you're above ground. Yeah. And there, there's a slight puzzle solving aspect to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but also that move has a different function when you're in the air. And it's sort of like a dive bomb. So when you're sort of, this is really actually a really satisfying double jump as well. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of games have a satisfying double jump. I, I know mm-hmm. uh, like Ratchet and Clank has a good double jump. Yeah. Um, 
but other than that i can't think of many yeah yeah uh but this one like when you're that high in the air and you do a dive bomb it just it feels so good to just <laughs> land on top of an enemy and yeah. a lot of the time there's like trails of coins that are in a, a diagonal and you just zoom down at, at the exact right angle and and get all the coins and it's just re- really really satisfying uh for me i feel like here's the thing in order for something to control well in the 3D space, it all boils down to camera. If your camera is not good, your controls aren't going to be good. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's the thing that these guys crush is the camera is so fluid and just works. You never feel like your your gameplay is diminished because you're fighting the camera. Yeah. Because that's the number one thing. If you are fighting that camera to try to see things, to maneuver, it just takes you out of the game. This, I never felt once that, like, hey, man, you're fighting this camera to get in the angle, to see your character a proper way. Like, mm-hmm. it was just, it just flowed very, very nicely is the best thing to put it, best way to put it. Mm. Um, what would you say impressed you the most about this game? Um, I'm not really sure. It's kind of just like an amalgamation of everything that it does well. It's not like, you know, uh, what's the saying? It's like a jack of all trades, master of none. It's not that, but it is good at everything in a, in a way, in its own way. There's a there's a lot of variety to the game I didn't expect, and that has a negative impact for me as well. Mm. But but also it's positive because you're not just doing the same thing over and over. It's not just you know, you go into a world and explore and collect all the coins and then you bounce. Like, there's other types of levels that you do. And some of those are really, really good because you have 3D platformers like 3D Mario games. Mm-hmm. And that this game's got that, you know, to the max, brilliant 3D platformer where you can control the camera, like you're saying. But also, it has side-scrolling levels. Yes. And this is like two games in one Mm -hmm. you have a 2d side-on platformer and the 3d platformer and i think they nail both of those really really well and i think that that's super impressive like for a team to focus on all these different types of gameplay and get get them all going really well that's you know that's really impressive to me i would say it's two and a half d if you because yeah because you can go back Deeper yeah, into, into the, the level, yeah. it, it reminds me a lot of Tropical Freeze. Exactly, where, where you can bounce yeah. back and go back into stuff, but then you come forward. Like, and there's even one. There was even one level that I hit where you're on pipes and stuff, and mm-hmm. it's almost like you're going three levels. Yeah, you're going like three dimensions deep. You know, yeah. and it, it made it feel like the level was alive to me. Yeah. Um, for me, you I could, think. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, I was just going to say, you can definitely feel that tropical freeze, that Donkey Kong mm-hmm. uh, history. You yes. know, the developers are clearly inspired by that because yes. there's things like the character's name is Lucky, mm-hmm. and you collect the letters that spell out Lucky throughout the level, just like old Donkey Kong games. Yeah. You collect Kong, yes, and it's like they've they've clearly looked at that and thought, you know, that's a cool mechanic. Let's just put that in our game. And there's no shame in that. I think they no, just I think it's great. They, they utilize it really well. Yeah. I, Spot on. I agree. For me, what impressed me the most is the character designs. And what I mean by that is the one thing that when I play a Mario game, and I'm sorry if I'm going to keep comparing this to Mario, but I feel like that is the, that's the, that's the mark that you're going for. Mm-hmm. That's the benchmark. It's a Mario game. The one thing that I find to be stand out in a Mario game is the bosses. And when you get into these levels and you fight these bosses, the one that comes to mind is the Koopa Kids, right? They all have character. They all have, you know, like you you run into each Koopa Kid and each one has personality. Mm -hmm. And that's how it was with this. They have these this group of cats that are the villains and each one has a different personality. And like, as I started each world and a different cat was coming at me, I was like, this is kind of cool. Like, each one was quirky and had its own character and its own, you know, way about it. I loved the character design. I thought they nailed it with that, in my opinion. I was so, 
Like, it was the thing that enthralled me the most. Like, as yeah. much as I love the gameplay and I love everything else, if you can, if you can make me fall in love mm. with the world around it, where I go, I can remember this later on. That's winning for me. You know, yeah. you, you touched on it a little bit earlier with ukulele, and I feel like that's the one thing that kind of fell short with ukulele. Like, you know, yuka, you know, ukulele, fine, no big deal. But, like, I didn't feel like in that game there was anything really memorable to me that made me go, like, I remember this stuff. This is holding value on my heart, and it, it means something to me. Well, Super Lucky Sale, it just, man, it just really spoke to me in a different way that hasn't happened since Amar, since the first time we met the Koopa Kids, you know, in, in, in what was Super Mario Bros. 3. So mm. when when all that started to happen, and now that we're in the 3D world and we meet the Koopa Kids, it's like now you start to see their personalities come out. That's how I felt with these cats. It was yeah. like their personalities are all coming out. We're seeing yeah. it. They're like these Ill, evil villainous things, and it was really good, man. They did a good job with it. Yeah, they've really filled it full of character. Like the whole game has got a personality, like you say. Yeah. You know, each level or each series of levels it has its own theme and its own unique race of creatures that you you come across. You know, like you say, each vi- each new villain has its own sort of unique personality mm-hmm. and. It's just really strong. Like, there's a you have a little friendly sidekick character. He's like this little golem, this little rock thing. Mm-hmm. And he's uh, every time you get a loading screen, he's there giving you encouragement. Yeah. He, he, you know, each time there's like a new message that he's got that's related to, you know, what you're doing in the level, or you know, he's just really nice <laughs> and really and really funny at the same time yeah. as well. Like. Yeah, they just they pack it for the character. They you know really what was do. was really cool to me and impressive was the first world that you enter and you go mm. in and that like dead golem is kind of like just sitting there perched up and then yeah. you grab the different ones and they you take them back to or the sparks and you take them back and they he starts to come alive. Yeah, and I was like that is so cool, man! Just this yeah. gigantic creature, kind of like dead per se, and you bring them back to life. Like it was. It, it, man, they do such a good job of stuff like that. In this they one. do. I think the level design is actually really strong in this game because, you know, they theme the worlds, but they're not really your traditional themes. You know, mm. it's not like, oh, this is the lava world and this yeah. is the ice world. Like, it's got that a little bit, but, you know, like the second world is, is like this strange worm farm mm-hmm. thing. It's like, it's like hill, hillbilly worms and. Very strange, but yeah, it's yeah. like you're going you're going around a farm, mm-hmm. and it's just it's such a unique thing. Um, and I don't know how how far you're into the game, but the world I'm on at the moment has these these creatures that are like they're super into finding your inner peace, mm-hmm. and they're like these big like yeti yeti creatures. Yes, yes. Um, and they're all about training the mind and training the body, <laughs> but the whole world, like the levels you go through are really, really dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like, you know, it's like full of like fire traps and swinging claws and all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, but you know, it's that sort of juxtaposition that works really well. So in your opinion, can Lucky's Tale become a top tier franchise slash mascot in gaming? That's a strong question, it boy. <laughs> We're bringing it, man. We're bringing it. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think it can. Um, I, I will say that there's a few things that let this game in particular down for me. Um, I think the plot isn't overall that interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some of the characters talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, and you just end up skipping through the text because you want to get to the the fun platforming. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are certain types of level that. I don't get on with so much. Um, you, you remember the the shrines in Zelda, mm-hmm. uh, Breath of the Wild, where you had the gyro thing, where you control a ball and you have to like tilt the stage around for the yeah. ball. There's stages like that in this game, and I just mm-hmm. find them really, really annoying. You don't have, you don't have to use gyro, yeah. but it is it's just as annoying as it, as it was in Zelda. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's other like puzzle levels. They're like little mini stages, yeah. and especially in the first world, you get these things where you have to move the golems around on a line to get the right statues in the right place. And 
I love stuff like that, but it's just so simple that it's just boring Mm -hmm. and they don't really take it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, you know, if they keep up with this solid platforming design and keep the, you know, the character for, you know, the characters and the great levels, but with the variety, like if they sort of just rein that back in a bit and, and have like the little mini levels just be a bit more, fun and a bit more challenging Mm -hmm. um then i think that yeah this this could become a series that takes hold i feel like this and this is where i would i would put this on par of i feel like this is uncharted one and i'm waiting for uncharted two like at that time like and when uncharted two hits you go oh wow Wow, they they floored me. Like mm. you're playing Uncharted One, you go, okay, I get what you're doing here. I understand what you're trying to accomplish. You're you're nailing everything. So like I would say, like they 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 hit the vault, they come off the vault, mm. but the landing they wobble just a little bit. And if they can just stay focused on, like you said, the the, the things that work very well, mm. this can absolutely become a Mario, a Ratchet and Clank, like these, this franchise that you remember forever. Like they have a great character design, a great setup for everything. They could absolutely kill it moving forward. And Mm. I look forward to a sequel of sorts from this team. I think that they can do a fantastic job. And I think that they have showed enough promise that they could absolutely, as long as they just push through like you said, tighten up some loose ends. Mm. Absolutely, home run all day. In in terms of like a sequel, um, would you like to see more innovation in the moves that Lucky has? Because yeah. he doesn't really learn anything new from the start of the mm-hmm. game. You're given the basic moves and controls, and you carry that through the rest of the game. Yeah. So, do you think it would be interesting if they introduced like? A bit like the old Banjo Kazooie game, where you could learn new moves as you progress through the game, and the platforming gets more complicated because of the different new moves and abilities well, that you pick course, up. Of course, of course. You know, like when you think about the original Mario, you just had a couple. You had Turbo Jump. That's it. Mm. Mario Two comes in, and they give you all these power ups and all this stuff. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. This to me was this is a team that had a great concept, a great art. They wanted to try something. And they did it. They they went out there and they did something that, let's be honest, a lot of people were, are not able to achieve and accomplish. We talked about it. Ukulele. Like, this is a team, ukulele, that mm. made 3D platformers in the 90s. This is what they were they were built on. You know, they were built on, on, on 3D platforming. They did numerous versions of it. And mm-hmm. they couldn't even come close to what this game is. Yeah. And I feel like this game... Buries ukulele as as crazy as that might be to some people to hear me say. I think that this game is a home run all day long. I feel like it is fun. It is a, a good game, and it's a great starting point. I think mm. that what they do is they take the basics of what they have and they ramp it up a little bit, and they go, "Okay, we're going to now implement some power ups." Could be something silly. Could be like, "Hey, man, you go to this level, you grab a carrot, and maybe it gives you like super speed run." Or whatever it might be. Like, they can add stuff to it. You know what I mean? Like, mm. maybe you implement a triple jump as time yeah. goes on. You know? Like, there are things that they can do. And, and and I'll even be as bold as to say this. Don't be afraid to steal moves off of Mario. Like, if it works, do it. But make it your own. Yeah. Like, take, take a little, you know, take a little uh, artistic, you know, chance and 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 take it and take some artistic liberties with what you see they do pull it into you make it your own absolutely i think that they could absolutely do some great things in the future with this Mm. so real quick before we wrap up here what is what would you you have any overall thoughts or your your final synopsis of this thing i don't know i think we covered it mostly what what do you think they do best in terms of 3D and 2.5D levels? Do you think they do one better than the other, or do you think they're kind of equal? That's a good question. I think they're they're kind of equal. Mm. Um, I enjoyed both. 
It wasn't like I was like, man, I like this a lot better than this. Mm. I actually love both. And it was like, it was, it was fun when I did them. I, and I think that's the thing that I would take away from mm. there. That's the unique catch for them. Like Mario either does 2d or 3d. They don't do both. Mm. You know, Tropical Freeze, Donkey Kong, he either does 2D or 3D. Although they only did one 3D and they never went back to it. Um, you saw Ukulele. Ukulele did 2D, 3D. But nobody yeah. kind of intertwines the mm. two. That would be, to me, that would be the, the niche or the, or the, the, the thing that separates them. Yes, from the, else. the USP. Yeah. Yes. Like, that's the thing that people go like, that's why I love that game. Yeah. Because I get the best of both worlds. And I would stick with that it, it, moving forward on that. I don't. I wouldn't go, hey, the next game needs to be 2.5D or the next mm. one has to be strictly 3D. Keep them mm. that way because you're giving people that – because, listen, platformers love platforming. It don't – you know, platforming fans, I should say. People yeah. that play platformers, they love the platforming aspects. doesn't matter if it's 2.5D. doesn't matter if it's 3D. Like, whatever. Like, just give us more of that. Like, that's your go-to. That's your sticking point. Yeah, man. So, um, my only final thought that I would say is, if you have not played this game, you owe it to yourself. Get this game and play it. If you are a fan of Mario, if you're a f fan of 3D platformers, you're a fan of side-scrolling games, go get this game. You will not be disappointed, in my opinion. Uh, I would recommend it all day long. Yes, and I will say, it runs really smoothly. Like, for as good as this game looks, I, I've not really had any technical issues with it. Whereas I did a bit with ukulele. It was a bit stuttery, that game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this one, so smooth. Even yes. in handheld mode, like, really. I, I agree. I couldn't agree yeah. more. So if you guys are interested in, in finding out more of what Toby does, just hit him up over on Twitter at Toby's underscore take. You can follow him over there. You can follow me, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch, all at Nintendo Gurus. That is all. Uh, peace out, Preston. Ciao. I go with that stupid play some video games and then, 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 then. Ah, what was it? I forgot what it was, Bobby. I've, Have I you gra grab yourself a coffee and play some video games? <laughs> Something like that. It's, it's dumb. <laughs> it's all dumb. <laughs> <laughs>